Do you want to play your flat screen games in a virtual environment in VR? Well, if you do and latency is important for you, then this video will go over your options and identify which app is best and how to fine tune it. First off, this is aimed at users for the Quest 3 or other Meta devices or Pico devices for the use with virtual desktop. I will not go over all settings, but will explain the main ones that are useful for day-to-day -day use. There are a couple of other apps which will allow you to game in a virtual environment, such as Immersed or Meta Horizon Workrooms. However, even though the latency is usually shown as very low in Immersed, I find the latency to be too high or unreliable for gaming in both Immersed and Horizon Workrooms. There is the option of installing or sideloading the app Moonlight, which is aimed at providing a game stream from your PC. However, it is only compatible with NVIDIA GPUs and doesn't give you any nice environments to game in. I've also previously sideloaded Parsec, but it is not optimized for use in a VR headset. So in my view, there's only one app to currently do flat screen gaming in. The app I would recommend to use is Virtual Desktop, and it is worth mentioning at this point that I'm not affiliated with Virtual Desktop in any way. To make the most out of flat screen gaming in Virtual Desktop, as always, ensure your PC is connected to your router with an Ethernet cable, and it is best to have your headset connected to your router's 5 GHz band. The Quest Pro and Quest 3 also support 6 GHz with Wi-Fi 6E, so that is also a good option to use if available. But be aware the 6 GHz band isn't as good for penetrating through objects or walls, or traveling longer distances. Once connected through Virtual Desktop to your PC, check in the Computers tab to double check your Wi-Fi connection band and check your connection speed. Here is a table of the maximum speeds for each band to allow you to compare how strong your connection is. Next up, usually you would go to the Streaming tab where the majority of settings are found and you can find my video here detailing those settings but the Streaming tab is focused on VR streaming. To focus on the settings required for 2D flat screen gaming, go to the Settings tab. Here, there are a number of settings which adjust your environment and desktop stream. Under computers at the top left, you will find the option to auto connect, which determines whether the virtual desktop will automatically connect to your PC if it identifies one to connect to on your network. Just below that, you will find use optimal resolution. This, as it says, will change your monitor's resolution to match the resolution being streamed to your headset to maximize the clarity. So it's recommended to keep this on. Underneath this, you will find environment quality, which will determine the quality of the graphics for the environment around you. A higher setting will use more processing power from your VR headset. So if you want to ensure you have the best latency possible for flat screen gaming, it's worth trying this on the low setting to reduce the load on your headset so it doesn't impact on the game being streamed. If you prefer a higher quality environment and are happy with the level of latency, then high is the setting for you. Next, we have frame rate. There is that saying that frames win games, and there is some truth in this. At 72 frames per second, the image on your screen has been updated 72 times a second, which is once every 13.8 milliseconds. This means that if something happens in the game, such as an enemy coming around a corner, you could have to wait up to a maximum of 13.8 milliseconds to see it. At 120 Hz, the images are being updated 120 times a second, which is once every 8.3 milliseconds. This means the maximum you have to wait to see any in-game developments is up to 8.3 milliseconds, and that is 5.5 milliseconds faster than someone playing at 72 frames per second. So if gaming latency is important to you, then you will want to have it set as high as your computer can manage. I'd recommend an app called HW Info or MSI Afterburner and River Tuner Statistics Server to monitor your computer's processor and graphics card load and frames per second if your game doesn't have the option to monitor it built in. Desktop bitrate determines how much data is transferred per second and your computer graphics card will compress the data for sending over Wi-Fi and then your headset will decode it. The higher the bitrate, the better the image quality you will get. However, the higher the latency will be. So again, if latency is crucial, if you're playing online for example, then set the bitrate quite low to start with to see if you're happy with the latency and image quality. I found around 30 megabits per second was a good starting point for me. When playing Counter-Strike 2 offline though, I found that 100 megabits per second still gave me a very responsive feel. So again, this will all depend on your PC, network and type of game being played. Screen brightness is exactly what it sounds like. 
Dynamic lighting will allow, when enabled, for the screen lighting to also impact on some of the virtual desktop environments, which will help with the general atmosphere of the environment. Under advanced options, you will have the option to boost clock rates. This can be particularly helpful if you do want to have the environment quality high, or if you are screen recording what you are seeing in your VR headset. It will help the headset process more and potentially quicker, reducing the chance of additional latency being caused by any additional processing load on the headset. The last setting I'd like to mention is increase color vibrance. This, as it sounds, will make the colors more vibrant if you feel they are looking a bit bland. So overall, with my setup currently working well, I have a good responsive feel to any flat screen gaming session, which significantly improves the overall atmosphere whilst playing your favorite game. I no longer have to look at my boring looking room and can choose from the good range that virtual desktop has to offer. So if you haven't tried flat screen gaming in VR, now is the perfect time. And once again, thanks for watching.